All right, tracing and metrics. The tracing crate has pretty much become the standard um, these days for how crates should be logging. Um, when I started talking about this a year or so ago, a lot of people were still using log. Now tracing has using the logging crate. Tracing has pretty much become the de facto standard that everybody's using now, at least in the enterprise code I've seen. Um, tracing from the library point of view is extremely easy. You can just emit log messages, and at some point, your program is going to have a subscriber. So the screen, the text that we have up here is showing you the long and boring way of making a subscriber, because we let subscriber is a tracing subscriber. FMT, format, we're saying that we're going to use it to format text for output to the screen. We're going to use the compact display. Um, you can customize exactly what appears on your log. In this case, I'm saying show me the file name of the source code, show me the line number, show me the ID of the threads, because you can identify your threads if you want to. Um, I'm not going to show um, have it print the name of the executable, the target that's running. Then you but you can boil that down to just format finish. You don't need to customize it. The defaults are pretty good. Um, as all, you know, that's one thing to bear in mind when you're writing Rust. Always try and pick same defaults. That is the Rust way. And so tracing subscriber set global default. Now every library that's feeding events into tracing will be feeding them in unless you specifically override them. So you can do um, tracing info, tracing warn, tracing error. So you see in the screenshot at the very bottom, info gets a nice green, warnings get a yellow, errors get a red. Um, <clears throat> you can customize which log levels it is being displayed. Format does a great job of giving you um, data for the screen when you're debugging, starting to write your program. This is the way to go. Even if you're using systemd to run services on Linux, this gives you nice, um, because systemd traps everything, puts it in your log files anyway, this gives you an easy way to get some logging going. But you may have a more complicated logging system in mind. Um, if you enable the JSON feature in the tracing subscriber, and the code here shows you format.json, once that feature flag is enabled in your cargo TOML, still make it the default and you log. Instead of getting prettified code, now it's spitting out JSON. And it's relatively simple to, uh, um, there are crates that will even do it for you to save that directly to a file if you want and spend rotation. Do whatever you want with it. If you're just reading the log file and your log file reader prefers structured data, you can do JSON, you can do any other formatting system that you want to implement. And so logging is boring, but it's hard to avoid. You know, it's particularly when you have a big complicated program, it's really hard to uh, uh, it's really hard to beat having a log message that tells you exactly what went wrong. You may not have had your debugger attached. If you're running a live server, you may not want to have your debugger attached. It's great to go into the log file, see what happened, but it may not give you a very big the big picture. And so tracing also gives you a, a macro you can run attached to any function called tracing instrument. Um, instrument is great. You uh, <coughs> Um, have to enable span events, um, as you can see in the code that we have there. When you run it, um, we've uh, told it to emit an entry when you enter a span, and we've told it that we want to know when a span closes. And so when Hello World enters, you just get a little note that Hello World started. When it closes, it actually shows you the execution time, both busy and idle. You'll see in this case, we are sleeping for one second. It overshot by 0.01 seconds, apparently. <clears throat> 